in the battle of Khandaq when Ali who was still considered young comparatively he wasn't that old or experienced in warfare when the Quraysh came and one man from amongst them Amr ibn Abdawud he crossed the trench and they would count if there were 10 people and he was amongst them they would count 9 and they would count 109 then after if he was a 10th one they would count that as 109 people he was considered to be equivalent to 100 men in strength so he come he came and he said may you bari who who is there who will come and and basically take me on so ali karam allah stood up and said ana ya rasulullah i will so nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him ijlis innahu amr sit down this is amr we're talking about so then again that man he had again challenged the muslims he said who's gonna come and take me on and ali radhiyallahu anhu stood up again and said i ya rasulullah and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam made him sit down this happened a third time the third time he said who cares if it's amr ali radhiyallahu anhu said who cares whoever it is so the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam then said fine go and do what you need to do and he made dua for him and he continued to make dua for him continuously because they couldn't see what's happening after that they went and he Amr bin Abdawud he saw that Ali bin Abi Talib was there to fight him and he said oh nephew what are you doing here and he said look I present to you the message of Islam you either accept it and he said well if I was to accept it then I'd be on your side and not on this side and said well if you don't want to accept it then then face my sword and he said look nephew i don't want to kill you ali radhiyallahu anhu said but wallahi i want to kill you because you're the enemy of allah and when he said that the other man amr ibn abd fell some ghayra he felt whatever he felt that okay my my is that my honor is being challenged here by someone who would be considered my nephew he jumped off his horse <coughs> and they started a fight and the dust cloud ran up and people didn't know what's going on eventually they saw a body on the ground and a head severed and ali radhiyallahu anhu picked up that head and said here's the enemy of allah that's now being def- been defeated so it, i mean his title asadullah al ghalib the lion of allah the dominant we know that hamza radhiyallahu anhu in the battle of uhud was given the title of Asadullah wa Rasuli. But Ali radiyallahu ta'ala was also given the same title. He was known as one of the swords of Allah Ta'ala. The love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and the love of Ali karam Allah wajhu for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can be seen and in fact his maqam and his daraja and his status and rank with Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can be seen on the night of hijrah. Oftentimes we give and with with of course as is deserved we give a lot of credit to Abu Bakr Siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu during the hijra because he had prepared everything for it and all the sacrifices that he's done ala ra'si wal ayn of course but we overlook the fact that if i was to tell anyone i'm going to travel and leave because everybody wants to kill me Could you please stay in my house sleep in my bed people will probably think that you are me they may come with swords they may come with knives and daggers and whatever and they may kill you but i only need you to stay back because the trust and properties and things that people have kept with me i need you to hand them back to those people to give them back and that night you just stay in my house and you don't pretend to be me you just sleep and this is the possibility this may happen in 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 his head i mean realistically that may have happened but nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him nothing will happen to you he said you sleep in my bed and nothing will happen to you now imagine that okay how old must he have been if he was born 10 years prior let's say let's say 10 years okay with the difference of opinion By the time Nubuwa rolls around and this time he's about in his early 20s if not 20 right 
So a man of about 20 some odd years old, not even 25, early 20s, 21, 22, 23 probably. So someone that age, sleeping in a bed at night, knowing that this may be his last night. But that's knowingly, hypo, knowing hypothetically. His iman was of such level that Rasulullah Sallallahu told him, nothing will happen to you. And nothing happened to him at all. In fact, he said, I had the most peaceful sleep that night. Because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told me nothing will happen to me, hence I slept like there's no tomorrow. That was the most peaceful sleep I have ever received in my life, his own words. And he got up and they came and they saw that it was Ali, عنه, he stayed back because he had to give the amanat of people back to the rightful owners. And then he left for, Med- for Medina a few days later. His uh, mental description was such that he himself would say, ask me regarding any ayat of Quran, I can tell you whether it was revealed, whether on a mountain or on the ground, or while Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was mounted on an animal, or he was walking, or if it was on high ground or low ground, where exactly it was revealed, at what time it was revealed, regarding whom it was revealed. He himself says regarding his own knowledge of Surah Fatiha, that if I were to write down what I know just regarding the first surah of the Qur'an, which are, which are only seven verses, it would take 500 camels to carry the load of what I know in terms of paper. Just regarding Surah Fatiha alone. Imagine the rest of the Qur'an. Okay? So, that is the magnitude of ilm that Ali Radhatan has as Imam Tabrani Ahlali narrates in his marjam that Rasulullah Sallallahu said Anadar al-Hikmati wa Ali babuha that I am the gate of wisdom, city of wisdom and Ali is his gate. 